Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I have a Vostok Amphibia for review. I've had this watch for more than a year now and in this review I will finally replace the stock bracelet with this new one. I will talk about a mysterious and not very well known cousin of this watch as well as tell you about my ownership experience. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Hello and welcome to the Shiny Things channel. If you are new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It does help our channel to grow and bring you more reviews. Also, the links to where you can find the watch in this video and other watches that we reviewed in the past are in the description below. Most of us know the story of the Soviet military placing an order with the Chestopol watch factory for a mass-produced diver watch around mid-1960s. As a result, the factory came back with a product that was fairly unique and featured some innovative design decisions. One of the reasons for the innovative design used in this watch though came out due to some key requirements that were imposed by the Soviet Ministry of Defense. Probably not in these exact words, but in a nutshell those requirements were number one, no purchase or no infringement of foreign patents and number two, avoid purchasing foreign equipment. Why such requirements were defined for this particular project is not exactly clear. The USSR did purchase foreign licenses around that time and at times the full production lines. For example, Italian car manufacturer Fiat signed a licensing deal with the Soviet Ministry of Foreign Trade in 1966, which resulted in one of the most popular cars produced in the USSR, Lada, which actually is still going strong today. Close to the watch industry, the chronograph movement 3133, which was used in a number of Soviet watches and still used in some Russian watches like Polyot, Sturmansky and Strela, was in fact manufactured on the machinery for Valju 7734 chronograph movement, which was sold to the USSR by the Swiss in the early 1970s. So back to Amphibia, they wanted something unique and I've got to say Vostok designers didn't disappoint. It is worth mentioning the lead designers for this project were Mikhail Novikov and Vera Belova. So what about that mysterious cousin? The Amphibia watch was meant to be a mass-produced product for the military and later for retail to the civil population. However, for the designated special missions there was a special variant or more accurately a special model of this watch with tougher requirements and more punishing field tests. The special watch was meant for submarine rescue missions and special forces activities, whatever they might be. I am talking about the model Vostok and Vice 30, where 30 stands for 30 ATM or 300 meters water resistance versus 200 meters on a normal Vostok amphibian. This watch also had more loom, different handset and different lugs to allow for more robust strap options. I really would like to get my hands on one of those for review, however, these were produced only for the military, so not a lot of those watches ended up with general public. Later, Chesterpool factory produced at least one limited edition run, but to the best of my knowledge it was only 300 pieces, so a very limited indeed. And back to the Vostok that I have here in the studio. Well, you don't buy this watch for accuracy and you don't buy this watch for exceptional quality although there is a certain consistent level of quality control applied but you rather buy this watch for the historical value for the in-house movement and for the reason that it was featured in the life aquatic movie on the wrist of steve zisso played by bill murray <laughs> Isn't it amazing how much a product placement can do for a brand? Even though in this particular case, I'm not sure if Vostok marketing department had anything to do with this. Looking at dimensions of this watch, diameter is just over 41 millimeters, height is around 15 millimeters. This is of course due to a quite a high domed acrylic crystal. More about this in a minute. Like width is 22 millimeters like tip to like tip is around 45 and a half millimeters which makes this watch very wearable even on the under seven inch wrist. This watch has an acrylic crystal 
just under 3 mm thick, which is 1 mm thicker than the crystal on Komandirsky watch, which is actually is a field watch. Also, even though Komandirsky and Amphibia look quite similar, the requirements for machining of the acrylic on the Amphibia watch are higher than on Komandirsky to ensure that the edges of the crystal that come into contact with the case are smooth and don't have any micro scratches or micro grooves that would allow that would allow the water to get through under pressure. Also, interesting feature of the crystal is its curvature. Not only it gives that nice domed effect that results in a di in a dial distortion under certain viewing angle, it actually serves the purpose of allowing the crystal to flex under the water pressure and flatten out ever so slightly, but without touching the hands. In regards to the dials, there is a really crazy choice of dials for this watch. If you look at Meronome, which I believe is an official factory outlet shop, you can choose from the popular scuba dude to more buttoned up dials like this one that I went for. Or if you are into some bizarre US slash USSR military aesthetics, try out this special edition produced for US military. Yes, it does say developed in USSR at the bottom of the dial. Most dials are very legible. There is loom and it is, it's not super luminova by no means. However, in my opinion, it performs better than most under $100 watches on AliExpress. Looking at the bezel, a lot of reviewers are very diplomatic about it. Frankly, I think it's pretty much useless. Egg timer at best. There is no loom or even a loom peep. The bezel is not unidirectional and can be very easily accidentally moved from a set position, which basically makes it not suitable for diving. Let's face it though, these days divers would use a specialized equipment anyway, rather than any so-called desk divers watches. On a brighter note, luckily there are a bunch of aftermarket bezels to choose from if you want to replace the stock one. This watch features what is known as Ministry case. It has decent, decent stainless steel construction and polish. Due to the domed acrylic crystal, the case is quite thick. The case back is specific to Amphibia. Again, it is thicker than one on Kamandirsky, which is a field watch, as I mentioned before, even though they might look pretty much the same. The case back reads water resistant at 200 meters, shock resistant or anti-shock amphibia and automatic. The screw down ring is used rather than the screw down case, which allows for the case back to push against the case seal under pressure, which has an effect of the more pressure is applied, the better is the watch waterproofing. This is of course, is a part of this watch unique design. The maximum pressure on the bay case is limited by the thickness of the back case and by the rubber seal that it rests on. I think the rubber seal deserves a special mention because it had to be specifically designed for this watch to ensure that it will rebounce back to its normal shape and position after the 20 atmosphere pressure removed, in other words, after watch resurfaces from the 200 meter depth. This watch features an in-house movement. The number of the movement is 2416B. It is automatic with a date complication. This is a fairly reliable and robust 31 joules movement with a 31 hour power reserve. Vostok states minus 20 to plus 60 seconds accuracy, which sounds like quite a lot. However, the watch normally comes out from the factory more accurate than that. In regards to the design of this movement, there are a lot of positive points. It has a bi-directional winding rotor. It uses ball bearings for the rotor, which is similar to the design on much more expensive movements like Swiss ETA and Rolex movements. The whole design with 31 joules allows for 10 year service intervals, which is really great. But taking into account the price of the swatch, you probably wouldn't service the movement anyway. You can just buy a new one. Crown has an interesting and slightly controversial solution to improve the shock resistance. It is very loosely attached to the stem, which makes it feel quite wobbly when unscrewed. 
However, while these were really good specs in 60s and early 70s, in my personal humble opinion, there should have been some more progress done in the last 50 odd years. There is still no hacking, which is not the end of the world, but I think it is an important function to have for a tool watch. There is no quick set date. Okay, you can go back and forth between 9 and 2 o'clock positions to change the date, but still, this function is implemented in some much cheaper movements. An accuracy of plus 60 seconds. Most watches in this price segment have much tighter accuracy specifications. Moving on to the bracelet. Okay, there's not much of a point to review the bracelet. Everyone replaces it anyway. It is teeny and feels flimsy. Well, the only one thing I will say here is that I actually didn't change it from the start. Simply, I didn't come around to do it. And it was okay to wear for about six months. The good news is, though, that I'm replacing it now with this mesh bracelet right here. And I think it looks pretty good. What are your thoughts? Please let me know in the comments below. The watch wears quite comfortably. And I think this is due to the cushion type case and also short light distance of 45.5 mm. As you can see here on my just over 7 inch wrist. In conclusion, I want to say that it is a historical timepiece with fascinating pedigree, military roots, and mysterious cousin. Remember that NVHF 30. Also, not to forget that this watch has an in house movement, and I think Vostok as a brand is doing a great job in extending the variety of models and options available. However, I personally think more research and development needed to bring the movement into the 21st century. Maybe there is something in the works and my complaint is totally uncalled for and I really would love this to be the case because in my opinion Vostok is a truly legendary brand. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos and of course hit that like button or the other one if you feel that way. We appreciate the feedback. Thank you for tuning in. All the best until the next review. Goodbye.